Believe it or not, but I've been using up quite a lot of skincare lately, so um, <laughs> it is in fact time to take out my skincare trash with you. In case you don't know me yet, hi, my name is Ulrike. I'm a key beauty and skincare content creator and have been writing and talking about skincare and key beauty since 2016. Super happy to have you with me and let's um, please help me get rid of my trash. I don't know why, but I really have been finishing up quite a lot of stuff. <laughs> Look. This is all I finished, but I think it's also because it's all such bulky stuff. I just felt, even though it hasn't been that long ago since I did a skincare empty, I just kind of really wanted to um, declutter my space, spring cleaning and all that. Also, I live in a very tiny studio apartment, so you know it, it piles up. So let's see what I've been emptying lately, and I guess we start with the cleansers. I'm always very I'm always very happy when I finish a cleanser because it's not that easy because you only need a tiny amount so it takes months and months. So I'm very, very proud of myself to have finished this, which is the Skin 1004 Madagascar Centella Light Cleansing Oil. I have spoken about this before. It's no wonder that I finished this really fast because it really has become one of my favorite cleansing oils. Here is a maybe surprising fact about me, given that I'm a key beauty <laughs> influencer. I don't really double cleanse that often because I actually don't use makeup that often. I don't have a very exciting social life. <laughs> I'm a bit of an introvert. And I also don't really have a nine to five where I have to leave the house. So actually most days I don't wear makeup. There's no point to it really. And on days where I don't make up, I don't really double cleanse. I might use my cellar water to just wipe off the sunscreen at night, and then I just use a foaming cleanser. And on days where I wear heavy makeup like this, I usually use a really strong cleansing balm. I find them better at removing makeup, to be honest, than most cleansing oils. But this I've used quite a lot when I just kind of used light makeup to meet someone to go outside and just feel, oh, today I need a bit of coverage to feel, <laughs> to feel self-confident enough to face the world. And on days like that, I often just grab this one. And the reason why I really like it is because it is really lightweight. I don't like the thicker oils that I, are often really hard to remove even when they emulsify well. I just feel very often you still have a bit of a film left and it just feels uncomfortable on my skin. This really rinses off like a dream. It is one of the best oils in terms of removability, if that's a word. <laughs> it emulsifies very fast and super thoroughly and it is very easy to rinse it off. And you really never feel like you have an uncomfortable film uh, left. Now I haven't used the Anua, <laughs> the Anua cleansing oil that I see hyped everywhere, but I've heard kind of mixed reviews about it. A lot of people apparently actually didn't do well with it. So I'm actually surprised that this one is not getting more traction uh, on TikTok because to me this is a perfect cleansing oil, especially for younger skin because it's lightweight. It probably doesn't break you out as easily as heavier cleansing oils and it is a very minimal formula. So to me this was a super hit. I would repurchase this. At the moment I just have so many cleansing oils that I want to just finally finish up because again I don't use them that often that I won't repurchase this but it's a definite 10 out of 10. One of the best cleansing oils that I know. And then I have two foaming cleansers. Number one, quite dirty, because <laughs> I, I used it for a long time, because this was a huge bottle. It's this one, which I think my light will probably just make very white, but uh, maybe you can still see something. Not many people are talking about this. It is a brand that is very trending in Korea, at least I would say so based on what I see on Jorge plus the Korean Olive Young website. 
they are doing very, very well. It's an indie brand and it's called S Nature. No one seems to talk about them here in the English-speaking beauty world. And it confuses me because, again, they are doing very well in Korea. Everything I've tried from them so far, I have also liked. The cream I really like. I love the toner. I've spoken about the toner a lot of times. And I did like this cleanser. So this is the S Nature Blanche All-in-One Cleanser. Now, it was maybe a little bit... Bland. <laughs> it was a bit boring, at least because I used it for a really long time and it took me a long time to finish it. But I did really like that it was very gentle. It is quite non stripping, but I also have to say that because it is so non stripping, it uses very gentle surfactants. Sometimes I did feel when I washed my face, especially again if I did an oil cleanse beforehand and just kind of used the micellar water, sometimes I felt like maybe it didn't really rinse, wash everything off as thoroughly as I would have liked. Makes me hesitate to give it full marks. I'm not sure I would repurchase it simply because I just got a little bit, again, a little bit bored of it towards the end but it was a fine cleanser. I don't think it can quite reach um, sort of the top three, top five cleanser elite uh, tier for me. Uh, it's not as good as the B Plain one, for instance, or what are some other ones that I really like. Um, the uh, Meta Peel one, it's not quite as good as that, but it is a good cleanser. And because it's quite a huge amount i also felt it was actually quite affordable although i did get it on sale i don't know how much it would be now but yeah as nature still to me one of those brands where i'm just baffled that no influencer is really talking about them in the english speaking world that is and then i also finished another cleanser and uh, i'm so glad i finally finished <laughs> it took forever which is actually um Something positive about this cleanser because it really lasted so long. You need only the tiniest amount and it will foam up like crazy. So very affordable from a brand that uh, belongs to the By Wish Trend or Wish Trend or Wish Company. I've spoken about my unwillingness to support that brand con conglomerate anymore. So. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm showing my empties, but I'm still kind of on the fence whether or not I'll ever talk about their products again, even though the products are great. But there's something about the company that I don't like in the way that they use influences. And it's the Claire's Gentle Black Facial Cleanser. I actually really like this. I really enjoyed how gentle it was. And it's a very sort of no-nonsense, straightforward, but very effective, and yet still very gentle, respects your skin barrier type of foaming cleanser. I've heard most people kind of talk not that great about it, and that surprises me because, yeah, I actually really enjoyed it. Claire's is one of those brands that I really love and respect, which is for their products, which is why it's so sad that I... Uh, d d I'm very critical of the company. I'm still hoping something will change at some point, but yeah, uh, for now, Claire's will just remain in my empties and I won't really purchase any new products and not accept PR. I don't even know if I'm still an affiliate. I think they kicked me out. <laughs> but anyway, <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> but uh, to, just talking about the product itself, it is actually a really good cleanser, I think, for... Um, People who don't need a, a very frilly sort of product, it's very straightforward, minimalist, and I did not find it stripping. I think a couple of people have said that it's drying or stripping. I cannot confirm that. I really actually enjoyed this. Just got a bit boring towards the end because it just lasted forever. I've had this for over a year, I think. I don't know. I was just very excited when I finally finished it. Another thing that I find very hard to finish is toner pads. And so I'm very excited that I managed to um, to finish two toner pads. And both of them are actually from Numbers In. And my opinion about those two couldn't be further apart because one I really like, the other one I just fully do not understand the hype. 
Let's start with the one that I've already talked about in two videos. <laughs> and hopefully now we can just finish talking about them because mm, I really did not understand why they are so popular both in Korea and here in the West. It just, I don't quite understand. And they were the numbers in, what are they called? Number five plus vitamin niacinamide concentrated pads. And yes, I have finished these. Hallelujah. It took me a real long time. <laughs> oh, the tongs are still in there. I never know if I should keep these or not, because I have so many now, and it's not like I use them for anything else than getting out toner pads. I don't know. But the waste from toner pads is honestly not great. Let's, let's be real. But anyway, that was not why I disliked these. That would be hypocritical because I've tried other toner pads that I liked, despite the packaging. I just do not, still do not feel any, any effect from them. I've used them up until the very last toner pad. I've used, how many is it? 70 or 75 of these toner pads and they did really, truly nothing they were not negative it was fine using them they didn't irritate my skin and they didn't aggravate any redness or anything they're completely neutral in terms of negative points i really don't have anything super extremely negative to say about them but they just didn't have an effect they don't really hydrate very much i do not see a brightening effect from them and that's kind of the number one thing that they are being sold as as a brightening and hyperpigmentation fading toner pad and neither of those two things happened for me so i would not repurchase them i love numbers in but this to me was not an effective product i'm so sorry i wish i truly wish because they sounded amazing but me now on the other side of the <laughs> toner pad duo is a toner pad from Numbers In that I absolutely love and think is one of the best toner pads that I've tried. Not so much for exfoliation, I don't think it has anything exfoliating in them, um, but for calming, soothing and especially combating redness. These ones I actually am strongly considering repurchasing. At the moment I have to be a bit careful with my money, that's why there haven't been any <laughs> all of young unboxings and won't be for a while because yeah I, I have to be careful right now <laughs> and I don't get PR so not much anyway. I don't even know the last time I got anything sent. Oh yeah, uh, or The Ordinary. I think that's the only brand at the moment that sends me stuff. So these are the numbers in Centella Relief Green Toner Pad number one. And I love those. I've spoken about them before in a couple of videos, I believe. They do contain essential oils, so they're not fully unfragranced. I'm not that bothered by fragrance overall, and these I didn't feel were very heavily fragranced. And to me, they were very gentle, really, really soothing. One of the most soothing toner pads I've tried. I actually think these are better even than the Abib hard leaf toner pads. I use these so, so often that it's no surprise that I actually finish them rather quickly compared to other toner pads. Would always repurchase these. They're especially good for toning down redness. This is such a fantastic product and it's why I love Numbers In. They do this very, very well. These types of very gentle, effective, plant-based, types of products. I really love the toner from this line as well. I think there's now a cream that I really want to try. I just, I do love number seven. It was just that the number five toner pads didn't work, but this highly recommend it, especially for people who suffer from redness, acne prone skin, as long as you can handle the essential oils. And then there's one French product <laughs> in the midst of all these KBD products. And it's this one, which used to be very popular and very famous when skincare blogs were a thing. Um, Carolyn Hirons was the first one to talk about this, I think. And then I went 
viral and it was sold out everywhere. I don't remember when that was. It was like the early 2010, so a long time ago. French pharmacy skincare, not really having as much hype anymore as it used to, I think. But um, it's still just wonderful skincare. I live quite close to the French border, also here in Germany, French skincare. Uh, is very widely available in pharmacies and this I got actually in Germany for a while. Zero Sync was not available in Germany but it is now but I used to always go to France to, <laughs> to get it. So this is the La Roche Posay Zero Sync. It is a zinc sulfate solution facial spray. I think apart from the zinc sulfate there isn't much else in there i think only water and a little bit of sea salt from what i remember and this is a true cult product in france la roche posay actually says that you can even use it on small children and babies now don't take my word for that <laughs> it's just what the brand says but it really became very well known as a uh, a multi-purpose type of redness soother and especially for people with acne prone skin or very reactive skin. Zinc is a really good thing, a good ingredient to add because zinc can first of all mattify your skin. So if you have excessive uh, oil, excessive sebum, it can help sort of tone that down and regulate oil production and it can also just mattify the skin a little bit. It helps with pore care, it has a sort of cleansing and anti-inflammatory effect and it is especially good when your skin is redness prone or inflamed and you just kind of spray it on. I buy it because I do get so red especially during hay fever season and this always does a really good job soothing that. Uh, the only thing is that it is a little bit, tiny bit drying, I find. Now that I'm a bit older, I notice that if I use only this as my facial toner, it's not enough. It will still need a hydrating layer. But especially if you're still in your uh, early 20s, if you're a teenager or have teenage children, I think the people watching my channel are a little bit older. <laughs> uh, this is really fantastic because it can really help just bring down the inflammation, the redness, even the itching a little bit. It's beautiful and it's just a very fine mist that doesn't spritz too much or make your skin too wet. You know, it's, it's wonderful. It's a beautiful product that I would always repurchase. And then let's continue with serums. And I finished another real favorite of mine. i would kind of forgotten about it a little bit, but then I um, started using it again and finished it. This is the CKD Retinol Collagen, uh, what's the full name? Oh, here, Small Molecule 300 Collagen Pumping Ample. I remember that had a, had a really weird long name, but it is a fantastic product. I spoke about this quite a lot when my channel started and then I kind of started using other retinol products and almost forgot a bit about it but it really is just such a good product. It contains only a tiny amount of retinol plus collagen. It has these like collagen capsules almost and what it does when you use it is that it really just plumps up your skin noticeably. I used this a lot when I started filming to just kind of create a really even canvas before makeup, especially these lines here. It really does a fantastic job to just plump these up and make them look less visible. It's a bit of a magical product. I also do find it very, very hydrating. I would absolutely always repurchase this if I didn't have enough ampoules and serums at the moment <laughs> to uh, get through. I don't remember which video it was when I talked about this at length, so I'll make sure to link it somewhere here if I find it, uh, because I've also deleted a couple of older videos because it just looked horrible. <laughs> but I'll see if I still have it. Collagen is not... It's often misunderstood, I think. It does not, of course, replenish collagen in the skin, but it is 
uh, humectant so it will hydrate skin and yes it will make skin look smoother and more plumped up i like collagen products i don't expect them to magically replenish collagen i just find collagen a really good humectant for the skin and so i feel it's just sometimes a little bit demonized and misrepresented because it's not a terrible ingredient and it's also not a full-on scam it's just that sometimes the effects of collagen can be over promised but um, this in combination with a very low dosage retinol uh, i found very effective in uh, giving a bit of an anti-aging boost and again it's just beautiful for makeup prep and while i'm talking about the ckd ample i also finished and finished until the last drop the very popular cream from the same brand in the same line and it is the retinal collagen small molecule 300 cream this at f this was an interesting journey for me using this cream at first i didn't like it and i felt it doesn't really do anything for the skin but the more i used it I tended to always use it overnight because it's quite heavy actually it's more like a balm almost the more i used it the more i really like the effect it would have overnight especially in winter because it's a really nice sort of plumping occlusive balm and it also has these little collagen capsules so it also again kind of gives a bit of a boost uh, and a plumping effect to the skin. I was really sad when I finished this and was I'm kind of tempted to repurchase it because I really miss it in my routine. I would always use it during uh, um, on those nights where I don't use a, a higher dosage retinol. It doesn't aggravate the skin because again, the retinol content is actually quite low, but it still kind of gives an overall anti-aging and smoothing and uh, plumping boost and it's really good at in just sealing in all the hydrating layers it's beautiful and on to another brand and another product that is weirdly underrepresented in the english-speaking key beauty influencer world even though it is a very popular brand in korea and a very well received brand in korea and it is the lab and this is the Expert True Toning Serum, anti-blemish for sensitive skin, which is this one. I really, really liked this one. This is a brightening serum. Uh, it contains, from what I remember, a vitamin C derivative and quite a couple of sort of hydrating, brightening and anti-aging ingredients. And it did a really good job sort of subtly brightening overall brightening in evening out my skin tone is very gentle and i just really loved it i love the texture i love the textual feel of it on the skin it always felt very refreshing i just grabbed this very often when my skin just felt a little bit off and was dull but i didn't want to use sort of a more aggressive vitamin c serum or hydrate um hyperpigmentation fading serum i would always grab this one because it's really gentle and yet does have a bit of an effect it's not a super intense effect but it is noticeable at the lab it really i do not understand why people don't talk about this brand more outside of korea their products have always been amazing for me their creams are also fantastic Needs more love, this serum, really fantastic. And onwards with the really fantastic serums. <laughs> this one is an absolute classic, a first generation, K-Beauty first generation classic that is for Western, you know, how Western people, quote unquote, discovered K-Beauty. This was one of the first products that kind of went viral, at least here in Germany, I noticed this was one of the few Korean beauty products that even the very, shall we say, dogmatic German skincare community approved of. And it's this one from Skin Food with this gorgeous, gorgeous packaging. I really do still like the almost old school packaging of the first gen Skin Food products. It is the Skin Food Royal Honey Propolis Enrich essence now it's mostly uh, a serum 
I think essence is always a confusing term. An essence can be either the the consistency of a liquid toner or it can be really thick, thick serum. In this case, it's a serum and it is quite sort of syrupy and sticky, but it is so beautiful. This contains how much percentage? I think it even says on the thing. 63% propolis extract. Propolis is a really fantastic ingredient for all sorts of skincare woes. Anti-inflammatory, antifungal, so a lot of people with fungal acne really do very well using it. It is um, really good for people with redness prone skin. It's also very hydrating, it's soothing, calming. It is a little bit antibacterial, so people with acne prone skin that are also sensitive do really well with propolis as well. It is just a miracle ingredient, really, pretty much. It also contains honey extract and all sorts of hydrating ingredients, humectant ingredients, and it is fragrance and alcohol-free, which is why the, again, very dogmatic, very strict German skincare community always hyped this up a lot. And it always deserved the hype because it's just beautifully hydrating and I do feel it is quite soothing. The only thing about it is that it is a little bit sticky. It takes a while to sink in, so for me it works better at night, but I do really love it. I would always repurchase this. This is just a classic. All right, and then I have a an eye cream from a Korean brand that has a, <laughs> a German name, which amused me greatly when I saw it. It is called Schwanengarten, which means swan garden in German but it is a Korean brand that, however, I think mostly seems to market towards non-Korean countries from what I've seen. I met um, Schwangarten at a trade fair here in Germany and the, I really do like the aesthetic of the brand. They also are kind of minimalist and most of the products are uh, very uh, sensitive skin friendly. They also have all sorts of uh, anti-aging products. Mm, their whole stick is sort of antioxidant content, which is maybe not the most original <laughs> take because in all truth, antioxidants are now in almost all products, but I like that they have a good mix of so natural ingredients, but still science-based. I always like that mix, but it's not too much into, and it doesn't dive too deeply into the sort of green beauty weirdness that can sometimes just be a bit uncomfortable, the marketing. And mm, I, I just found it funny that they have a German, <laughs> German name, I guess, to sound exotic, maybe, I don't know. I'm not sure what the connection with the Swan Garden is. I think they just wanted to sound kind of maybe European and fancy, question mark. Be that as it may, the product that I bought at the trade fair is this one, which is their antioxidant eye cream. And this is actually really more of an eye gel. It is a very light gel as well. I really like this as a very simple eye gel. However, I have to say, it was kind of spun to me by the brand wrap and by uh, another uh, booth that sold Schwangarten as an eye cream that was clinically proven to fight wrinkles and make wrinkles disappear. That is, that was not the case. <laughs> unfortunately, I have really prominent eye wrinkles, unfortunately. So I was a little bit excited that maybe it would do something for the wrinkles. It did nothing, <laughs> absolutely nothing. They are exactly as prominent as they were before I religiously used this every night to see if it would make a difference. But it is a lovely eye gel. I just wish they would stop with the marketing spin that it fights wrinkles because it does not. I mean, I a part of me knew nothing would happen, but you know, there's always a little bit of hope that maybe this is the magical product that can do this without getting fillers or whatever else you need, but no. It is a nice eye gel. I did very well with it. I love the texture. It's very soothing and a little bit cooling, but it doesn't have any magical wrinkling, wrinkle fighting abilities, unfortunately. Okay, and then we have, uh, let's go for the 
masks because I finished sheet masks as well. I just kept these. I didn't keep all the <laughs> sheet, the, the single sheet masks, but I did keep this four pack of these two numbers in sheet masks, which I bought myself. Now this is the first one I tried from numbers in and it's the number two sheet mask. I think it's called the glowing sheet mask, I believe. I got these uh, during a brand week, I think. They were super cheap, like $6 for five. And I just kind of wanted to try a new sheet mask and I really wanted to try more from Numbers In. And these I really love. I think this is one of my favorite sheet masks that I've ever tried. This is already my second pack, actually. <laughs> uh, don't I always remember to put sheet masks in my empties, to be honest. They are very hydrating. They have a very interesting essence. It's almost like a, mil a little bit milky and very, very rich, but they don't feel too overwhelming. Sometimes with the richer uh, sheet masks, the more anti-aging or super intense sheet masks, they can break me out. This never broke me out. It also is overall a very gentle sheet mask. The material is very comfortable. It really is like the ideal sheet mask for me to just get a bit of a pick-me-up. It really does give quite a nice glow and it just kind of plumps everything up really nicely. So it's a good one for, you know, to do the night before I do my videos. It's really good for a date night, not that I ever have those. Hashtag forever single, but... <laughs> Uh, you know, if you are dating, this is a good one to use if you really just want to look your best. And it's also just really gentle and beautiful. Another numbers in win. Now, I must have talked about these before. Maybe I unboxed them or something because I distinctly remember someone in the comments saying, oh, these are these are good, but you have to try the number one sheet mask because that's why I got these <laughs> which I've also now finished mm, I have to say these ones I didn't like as much the material of the sheet mask is not as nice it felt kind of almost a bit cheap and kind of stiff I really didn't like the material the material for these ones much softer for some reason and stretchier these ones are more rigid and also the essence I didn't like as much. It's it's hydrating, but it's not um, luxurious to me. The whole number one sheet mask, which is called Dewy Glow Spa sheet mask, uh, was just not as luxurious and comfortable. And the effect on the skin was not as noticeable. It just kind of hydrates. So these ones I would not repurchase. These ones I would always repurchase. The number two one, to me, much better. These ones, wasn't wasn't that impressed. My hair is getting frizzier by the second. It's a very humid day today. <laughs> but <laughs> what can I do? I also need a trim. But again, money is a bit... I, I will have to let them grow. They, they are what they are. But I just noticed that they're getting poofier by the... <laughs> Wait a second, because it's so humid today. We're almost done though. Two more products. And this one is a sunscreen by Dr. G. And it's the Red Blemish Soothing Up Sun, which I emptied and really like. This would be one that I would always happily repurchase, always would recommend. It's a very straightforward, simple, soothing, hydrating, Sunscreen, it is alcohol-free, fragrance-free, it is very sensitive skin friendly. Karma Korea made, of course, the number one manufacturer really for all popular sunscreens. It has the same base formula as the Beauty of Joseon one, the Round Lab Birch Juice one, and it works similarly well and it doesn't have a white cast. It's just really lovely. It's not super exciting. It's just very straightforward. And I would absolutely always repurchase this. This is a good one for like a family sunscreen as well, because it just works for everyone. It does have a bit of a green tint. I can't say that it worked specifically well for redness, but it just, you know, it's an everyday sunscreen. And um, I really love that it was fragrance free. So it's, I can recommend it to people with sensitive skin. And 
I think it's actually a little bit nicer than the Beauty of Chosun one. It's not quite as... I feel the Beauty of Chosun one and the Round Lab one as well can be a little bit heavy. This one felt lighter for me. Yeah, I loved it, actually. It's, it's a really good one. And lastly, a body care product from Aromatica. Uh, with a hair. Oops. <laughs> it's this one. It's a body oil. It's the Embrace Neroli and Patchouli Body Oil. I like this a lot. I do think it's overpriced, <laughs> as honestly are many of the Aromatica products, but they're also really good. And I know why they have a bit of a higher price point because, you know, it's, uh, they use a lot of organic uh, ingredients and they're very carefully made. They have a really great eco-conscious ethos and they have been an eco-friendly brand for much longer than the quote-unquote trend. So they were certainly at the forefront uh, of that and have been for a really long time. I really like the brand Aromatica, also a little bit underrated, I find at the moment. Not many people are talking about them, which is a real shame, but I think it is because some of the products are a little bit pricier. This one I bought at a sale where it wasn't as pricey, but it's only 100 mil and it was still like $30. So I don't know if I would repurchase it. <laughs> Uh, it was a bit of a of a luxury purchase for me, but I really liked it. It is very, a very thick consistency, so it does spread out well and it lasts quite well. The fragrance is really nice. It does smell very strongly of the Neroli, so it has a bit of a flowery scent, but not overwhelmingly or comfortably so. And I really loved how how moisturizing this was and it's it's a really nice sort of spa luxury experience if you can afford it it is definitely recommended but yeah it's not not cheap <laughs> and that was it my empties are now empty excellent this was very needed and very necessary because a lot of stuff has accumulated in a very short time. I think I was just close to finishing up a lot of products. So it started piling up and I thought, you know what, let's do another empties video to get those out of the way and I can, well, throw them out now. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you are new here, it would be fantastic if you stuck around. I do a new video every week on a lot of key beauty and of course skincare related topics. And it would be so awesome if you could subscribe. Just super helpful to us. One of the best ways you can support creators that you might be discovering on YouTube because it's hard to be seen when you're a small creator. It also always helps to give a video a thumbs up. Uh, it's such an easy way again to support someone it takes a nanosecond and it makes a huge difference for us and comments are always welcome as long as you're respectful and <laughs> I really do love engaging with you in the comments as long as you're respectful <laughs> and otherwise I hope to see you again in the next video next week until then please take care bye